Hello you lovely lot and welcome to a new video. My name is Katie and it is time to unbox and create with the January scroller box. As usual we always have a featured artist in the box and this month's artist is Zhutong Wang and there's a very lovely picture of some fish on a plate. I quite like that. Inside we had a mystery box with a sketchbook in there, which is a concertina one. We also have the usual candy, a pen, we also have a box with some mystery coloured pencils in there and they're obviously going to be good ones because they're Derwent. And we also have the Derwent blender pen. Of course we have the scroller magazine and they have some handy hints and tips from the featured artist as well as the additional gallery page where if you're very lucky you might get to be in there so congratulations to those of you who have. Anyway let us talk some more about the supplies. First of all we have a C. White of Brighton concertina sketchbook. It's 140 GSM and there are 38 pages to work on. Or two very, very long ones if you want. We have a Pilot B2B ballpoint pen with a medium tip. And it says on my list it should be blue, but I seem to have got a black one. We also have the Derwent Artist colouring pencils. We have six of those in the colour Gunmetal, Oriental Blue, Madder Carmine, Light Violet, Pale Peach and Silver Grey. And to smoosh and blend those colours a little easier, we have the Derwent Blending Pen with a 4mm nib. This month's prompt is Dish of the Day, but I just kind of wanted to focus a little bit more on what the featured artist had put there, so I'm going to say it's more of a fish of the day. I did just very lightly pencil out some forms of fish and they're not really any particular kind, they are just some fish swimming in a direction. And then I went on to add an outline using that Pilot Ballpoint pen. I kind of like the design of that pen actually, it's made out of recycled plastic bottles and I think they've kind of tried to emulate the look of that with the actual barrel of the pen which I thought was pretty cool. I thought I might as well just go to town as well on the background and I sort of add some swishy watery flowy lines in there too. I guess I'm drawing inspiration from a sketchbook I did about 10 years ago, which I have not shown on this channel, but if you are a long time viewer, you will have seen one of the concertina sketchbooks that I'd filled in. But I'll let you guys look through the library to find that one. With it being over four pages, I thought, yeah, I'm going to need to fill it in a little bit more. So I thought just by adding these details in there, it's going to add a bit of direction and a little bit of movement. Now I do actually quite enjoy a concertina sketchbook, but for me personally, it's a really huge commitment. By all means, you could just use it like a regular sketch pad and see each folded page as a separate page and just do your own thing on each and that is totally fine and I've done that before. Or you could be a little bit more ambitious and let one image spread over several pages or the whole book. I'm not gonna lie though, I think a few pages is my limit, at least for a video. The concertina that I featured a few years back took me about a month and a half to fill and I didn't colour anything in, it was all line work. However, we have colouring supplies for this, so I thought let's just see what I can do on a little bit more of a limited amount of pages. Now, one thing that I did notice with this paper was it didn't massively grip the coloured pencil all that well. And I'm not sure if that's because the actual pages themselves are double layered, so it's literally like there are two concertina sketchbooks stitched together. And I guess that is going to create a stronger sketchbook. However, it did make it a little bit tricky, for me at least, to get enough pressure down on the page. When I use coloured pencils, I tend to like a more rigid flat surface, and this just felt like there was another sheet of paper beneath, even when I'd stretched the sketchbook out, so just bear that in mind. However, with a little bit more pressure, it did bring out some of those colours a little bit more. The only ones that didn't really show up, at least in my opinion and with my experience, was the Pale Peach and the Oriental Blue. No, it wouldn't have been the Oriental Blue, it would have been the uh, Silver Grey. However, that blue didn't quite show up as much as I wanted it to either. 
If I compare it to the swatches, which would have been against a more rigid background, because I did do it on the sheet that was placed on the hard cover there, I did get a bit more of a yield of colour, but for the actual meat of the sketchbook, for want of better words there, I did just find it a bit of a struggle. I thought I would keep my mark making with those coloured pencils relatively simple and more gestorial. And using that blender pen did help to bring out a richness in there. So I think maybe it, it was good that one was included in there just to improve that coverage. And I also found as well, it did smudge the ballpoint pen. I quite liked that overall effect, but if that's not your cup of tea, maybe add your pen work afterwards just to avoid that happening. But I quite liked how it sort of brought out a bit more depth of the piece. And as you can see, those pale blues did come to life once I'd gone over them in that blending pen. The blending pen itself was a very good pen. It had a relatively soft nib, but it wasn't the kind where it was sort of crumbly and falling apart everywhere. One thing to bear in mind is if you're gonna do layer works after using that blending pen, is to make sure it's thor thoroughly, thoroughly dried out first. Otherwise, you're gonna get a very uneven texture when you go to apply another layer of color there. I decided to add additional details and outlining with the ballpoint pen because you know I like to outline everything about a million times but I do feel that it did make things stand out a little bit more so I was quite happy with that. Now there's one thing to consider when using a concertina sketchbook and that is the folds of the pages and that is if you're going over several. It's not really any different to a regular sketchbook if you're going to do a two page spread and obviously you've got those seams there. but. If you're going to do several pages in one go, you're going to have several more seams and I suppose you could really nitpick over the details and really bring things up to the edge and try not to let things bump over, but you know what, I kind of think that's part of the charm. I did find that using bulldog clips helped just to keep my pages in place as I was doing my thing here and I also wanted to introduce those red colours in which is why I'm doing one of those fish with a bit of red on the scales just trying to make each one a little bit different. And as far as the fish concerned I'd say we are pretty much done but did you really think I'd leave it at that? Again, if you're a bit of a long-term viewer, you'll notice a couple of years ago, I recreated a picture that I'd done in a con well, I wouldn't say it was a concertina sketchbook, it was an octopus sketchbook, but pretty much runs on the same kind of, I suppose, principle of the folded pages. And I should definitely check that video out too. In fact, my very first video on the channel was using the octopus sketchbook, so, you know, go take a look. And what I'd done on both of those videos was to conceal a picture within. Now, of course, it does require a little bit of lining up as to where things would go, but I guess once you get the hang of that, and it is just literally as long as the hidden page in the middle joins up with the surrounding ones, then you're kind of okay. You can create something like this too. And it's quite a fun exercise in composition. I thought because, you know, I, I do like drawing dragons, I guess a bit of a sea serpent or a water serpent would be perfect for the job. And pretty much like the fish beforehand, I added the scale details in with that ballpoint pen and introduced some of the colours. And because this was a concealed page, I could elaborate a little bit more on my colour choices there. Although it doesn't massively stand out, the pale peach was a good baseline to add a little bit of warmth because I kind of kind of thought the fish looked quite cool in colours. I also introduced those purples in there and I definitely went to town a little bit more with that red. I am actually really quite happy with this box though. I do wish those pencils did stand out a little bit more on the page, but I guess it's just one of those things where you've got to find a solution to get your mark making down in more inventive ways. I also love the fact that we were given a concertina sketchbook. I think they're so innovative and they really do get the old grey matter working as to how to do composition, how to make an image flow, or even if you don't do it over several pages, it's just nice to have a progression where you can just unwind the whole book and look from one page to the other all in one go. And I do think they are quite a good fun vessel to put your work on, I guess. 
I love the fact as well we were given a blending pen and I don't use them a whole lot of time when I do coloured pencil work but they are super useful. They are like a little bottle of zest it but in a more portable and convenient form. However, if you haven't got this scroller box and you're sort of wanting some of that blender pen action, a regular alcohol marker blender pen will do just as good a job too. I decided to take advantage of how it's smudged around the ballpoint pen so I really worked in details where the scales were and it did just make things stand out a little bit more. And once it had thoroughly dried and I guess I was at a stage to colour the face in and just merge all of that in together, that's exactly what I did. I used that very, very light grey just to give an overall colour. I, I, I do wish it did stand out a little bit more. It just felt like I was pushing it into the paper and it just wasn't quite happening. But, you know, it still added something there. And to make it stand out a little bit more, I introduced a bit more of a deeper red for the outline of this little dragonfish thingy-mabob. One of the things I did have to hold back on was wanting to complete the whole book. I think for me, maybe a little exercise and just holding back a little bit. Otherwise, this video probably wouldn't be up until June. So being able to just cut it off after a few pages and have a little bit of fun playing around with these compositions was actually quite good practice for me. And maybe that might help me pull my finger out and tackle some of the other concertina sketchbooks I've got knocking about. I quite like the fact as well this sketchbook comes in a little box because there's nothing worse than trying to put it on the shelf and all the pages flopping out and going everywhere and possibly damaging your precious artwork that you've put in there. So I like that and let's face it, it's going to be a sticker magnet no doubt and I've recently come into a lot of stickers so they may be adorning it very soon. I might do a beyond the box with this, but I might use some different mediums in there. I might actually use last month's scroller box supplies. So let me know if you want to see that and I will try and make that magic happen. So I ask you, have you used a concertina sketchbook before and what kind of approach did you take? Also, if you had this box, let me know down below what you thought and I guess what you did in it. And more importantly, did you get a blue pen or did you get a black pen like me? Here's a little skim through of what I'd done, a little demonstration of, oh look, there wasn't a dragon and now there is. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's given you a little bit of inspiration to tackle your own concertina sketchbooks if you have one. As always, I'll leave a couple of videos on screen or maybe a playlist that I think you're going to really enjoy, so why not click on one of those? If you've enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up and if you haven't already, why not hit that subscribe button? It really does help the channel out. But in the meantime, I'll see you lovely lot soon. Bye!